Course Material Characterization Course. In today's class, we will look at some of the problems related to scanning electron microscopy. So, these problems will be useful for you to solve some of the assignment uh, problems as well as the in the end semester uh, or the end of the course examination. So, we will look at some of the problems related to uh, resolution in electron opt I mean electron optics, electron optics as well as the, uh, the specific system specific problems and also we will look at some of the applications like in an ACM how we get the uh, resolution and what are the parameters which influence this uh, resolutions related to that we will look at some of the specific problems. So, you will appreciate the importance of these uh, concepts and then and then you can you will just get benefited while solving the assignment problems as well. So, we will just uh, look at the first problem. So, the first problem is when a magnetic field strength of 0.2 tesla is applied on an electromagnetic lens perpendicular to the electron beam direction with an applied voltage of 20 kilo volt, what would be the radius of the electron beam? And the electron mass is 9.109 into 10 to the power minus 31 kilogram and the charge is 1.602 into 10 to the power minus 19. Coulomb. So, what is that uh, clue we have? We are now talking about the the radius of the uh, yeah, beam, electron beam. So, the radius is given using this formula. If you recall the the electromagnetic lens schematic, we have written an expression in terms of So, 
this is a formula we can use this to obtain this. So, let us solve this say a simple substitution. can write uh, by simply substituting this 1 by 0.2 square root of 2 into 9.109 into 10 to the power minus 31 into 20 into 10 to the power 3 we are keeping in volts and uh, this is the charge. So, if you work it out, what you will get is uh, Uh, something like this or you can write it R naught is equal to 2.385 gamma. So, this is the answer. We will move on to the next problem. So, in a microscope, the applied probe current is uh, 3 micro amperes and uh, area of the cross section of the beam is about 1 micrometer, convergent angle is about 0 0.02 radians and what would be the brightness that, that is possible to op obtain in this system. So, now you have the, if you recall there is a relation between the brightness and the probe current and convergent angles and so on. So, you have to just uh, 
look back in the lectures the formula for the brightness and um, I will write brightness beta So, I p is the probe current and uh, alpha is the convergent angle and your uh, d p is the cross section of the beam. So, simply a substitution here. So, beta is uh, 3.043 into the power 9 that is the value of the brightness. Now, we will use this brightness value to solve another problem. So, let me write that problem. The SEM operating Twenty kilo volt. The IP and uh, and beta values of above and uh, the spherical aberration coefficient. of the electromagnetic lens is 2 micrometer and what is minimum probe size So, the problem is the SEM operating with 20 kilo volt having the probe current and beta values of this problem and then spherical aberration coefficient is, is about 2 micrometer and what is the minimum probe size of the electron beam that could be achieved and you can consider the constant k is equal to 1 and lambda is equal to 0 0.008 nanometers. So, if you recall the 
the minimum probe diameter considering the aberration d minimum which is equal to k C s to the power 1 by 4 and lambda to the power 3 by 4 times you have i p divided by beta lambda square plus 1 to the power 3 by 8. It is lit. This is the formula we have uh, seen for obtaining the minimum probe diameter. So, if we can substitute these values, let us see what kind of values we are getting. So, this is a simple substitution here. So, 3 into 10 to the power minus 6 divided by 3.043 into 10 to the power 9 into 0 0.008 square multiplied by 10 to the power minus 8 plus 1 to the power 3 by 2, 3 by 8. So, it is basically we are trying to substitute this and then you get the values in the range d minimum equal to 8.87 into 10 to the power minus 8. So, I request you to check this with your own calculator or we can simply say that 88.7 nanometer. <coughs> so, this is the final minimum probe current you can get if you have the ASEM operating parameters in this range. We will solve another simple problem.
So, let me read the problem. The primary electron beam current is 1 micro ampere, secondary electron current signal is 0 0.3 micro ampere and the backscattered electron current signal is 0 0.2 micro ampere. What could be the sample current, secondary and backscattered electron yield? So, if you recall, we have the a formula for this, a simple formula to calculate this. So, the primary beam current is written in terms of addition of secondary electron signal current, backscattered electron signal current and sample current. So, we can just rewrite. So, this is the, the first answer, the sample current is 0.5 micro ampere. So, the question number 2 is the backscattered electron yield, which is given by is eta is equal to I B A C divided by I naught that is the backscattered electron signal current divided by the primary beam current. So, again we can simply substitute this you will get again uh, same value. the secondary electron yield which is uh, written as a delta I S E by I naught which is nothing but 0 0.3 micro ampere divided by 0. 1 micro ampere, which is again delta is equal to 0.3. This is 0.2. The yield is uh, written as 0.2. Here the yield is written 0.3. There is no units here. So, a simple arithmetic which involves the uh, the concept of the how the primary beam current is uh, dependent on the the current of second electron and basketed electron and the sample current a simple substitution and then we can also work out the yield and uh, we have also seen that the 
the importance of this the yield of BSE and the yield of SE decides the, the contrast that we have, we have seen in the some of the theoretical concepts. So now we will move on to the next problem. So the question is for a given wavelength of electron beam lambda and the spherical aberration coefficient C s of the lens prove that optimum image aperture represented in terms of alpha opt is proportional to lambda by C s to the power 1 by 4. Assume that the net resolution is equal to this summation of theoretical resolution that is the disk of least confusion plus the disk of confusion created by the spherical aberration. So how do we go about this? What is the theoretical resolution? Let us consider this R1 which is equal to 0.61 lambda by alpha. So, disk of confusion created by spherical aberration by spherical aberration R2 which is equal to
C s alpha cube. So, net resolution if you write consider this expression as 1. So, we have just simply put the respective formula and then as per the assumption here, we have written the net resolution in the single formula. Now, since this net resolution is depending upon both theoretical resolution plus the spherical aberration, we can write something. So, what we are now say, saying here is, when the spherical aberration is minimized by the use of small aperture that is alpha apt, the diffraction limited resolution becomes worse with the decrease in alpha. So, we have to uh, make a compromise. So, what we can do is, So, we are trying to see or we are trying to differentiate the this expression with respect to alpha and see what we get. So, you get this uh, From this, we can write uh, alpha opt to the power 4 is equal to 0 0.61 by 3 lambda by C s alpha opt is equal to 0 0.203 to the power 4 lambda by C s to the power 1 by 4 or simply we can write uh, 
alpha opt proportional to lambda by C s to the power half. So, you can substitute this into the equation 1, you will get uh, R opt proportional to lambda 3 by 4 and C s 1 by 4. So, for optimum resolution. So, R opt is proportional to lambda to the power 3 by 4 and C s to the power 1 by 4, which gives the an expression for this given condition. If you assume this and the, the disk of least, least confusion will be proportional to these quantities. So, that is what the, the physical meaning here, the assumption made here will result in this kind of an expression. So, now you look at uh, another simple problem involving the depth of focus and depth of field. So, what is the depth of focus when semi aperture angle alpha is equal to 0 0.1 radians and the magnification m of 15000 x. So, we have seen and uh, this in fact, we have derived this in the SEM class with the schematic you can recall the depth of focus can be related to this. So, you simply substitute this this will be in mm. So, 1.33 into 10 to the power minus 4 mm or 0.133 micrometer. So, that is a very simple problem. Another problem let us quickly write.
So, an accelerating voltage of 25 kilo volts is applied to the tungsten filament in SEM. What is the wavelength lambda of the emitted electrons? So, it is again a very straightforward formula you have the lambda which is relating to the acceleration voltage, so very standard formula. We have seen that uh, so straight away you will get zero point zero zero seven six six nanometer for this kind of a voltage for 25 kilo volt you will get uh, in this range and uh, finally Question is <coughs> an electron beam refracts at an angle of 0.1 radians when the angle of incidence is 0.025 radians on passing through a region of potential difference V2 minus V1. Does the beam retard or accelerate through this potential difference? If you look at the or if you recall the, the very beginning of the electromagnetic lenses, we talked about the Snell's law. And then we said that uh, there is no difference between uh, light, light or uh, the behavior of light optical system as well as in electron optical system, they are also the same. So, in that respect, if you recall, we have written a formula like this. So, sin i and uh, I mean sin r by sin i is equal to square root of v1 by v2 and then if you recall that schematic where uh, the electrons are passing through the electropotential lens how whether it is uh, retarding or the or accelerating depending upon the voltage of 
the the applied the voltage applied to this system. So we can simply substitute and see what happens here. Sign. So you get uh, V1 is approximately equal to 1 6 times of V2 that is V1 is greater than V2. So then what happens? The beam undergoes yeah, retardation. So that is what uh, we will see when the voltage V2 is uh, greater than, I mean V1 is greater than V2, then the beam will undergo retardation. So with all this uh, uh, small, small numerical problems, uh, I suppose uh, you, you are able to solve the assignments as well as uh, you are able to solve small, small numerical problems and I hope these things, this exercise will help you in the final examination also. If you have uh, any specific queries, you are welcome to interact with us and we will respond to your queries. Thank you.